spectrum analysis, so there's those three signals again with the uh, red one turned off, that there's the three and I'll, I can turn down the bearing and you know whatever. What I'm going to do is show you that what we've been looking at all along is actually in three dimensions. We've got amplitude, time, and frequency along here. Uh, if the machine is running faster, the machine generates higher frequencies, so you see them sort of moving off to the right. If the machine's running slower, there are lower frequencies, it's closer to the left. So this is increasing frequency, and we have separated the three sources of vibration in proportion to their frequencies. Low frequency, higher frequency, highest frequency. You know, more amplitude, less amplitude. So, rather than looking at it in that format, what I'm going to do is come and look at it end on. And there you go. That is the vibration spectrum. Imagine there's a grey waveform behind here, a green waveform behind here, and the orange waveform there. I can just sort of simplify it a bit more. The, the calculation that does this is called the fast Fourier transform. So sometimes you'll hear Fourier analysis or you'll hear the FFT, the fast Fourier transform. Either way, this is basically what we end up with. And just to keep it simple, I'm just going to line that. Uh, oops, a daisy. Let's get that, that lined up. Anyway, the reason I'm trying to do that and not doing it very well is that what we've shown here is this is the frequency. And I'm simulating this as if right now, that's what I was just trying to do with the knob, make it vibrate at 30 hertz. Because I've got 10 blades, so therefore the vibration from the fan would be at 300 hertz. And the better way to say it is, well this is 1x, 1 times the running speed. I've got 10 blades, so this peak would be 10x. So if someone talks about vibration frequency, you might hear them say, oh it was the 10x peak. What's a 10x peak? Well, the 10x peak is 10 times the running speed. And a vibration analyst might think, oh, I wonder if there were 10 blades in that fan or 10 veins in that pump. You know, that's the sort of thing. If you look, and I didn't line it up very well, but this green vibration is never exactly 9x or 10x or 3x. It's always 3 point something, 5 point something, 7 point something. It always works out that way. But the beauty of all this is that there's the vibration from the shaft, there's the vibration from the bearing, and there's the vibration from the fan. So basically I might take a measurement one day and it, let's just say, looks like this. Whoops, I turned that too far, didn't I? So it might look like that. No green vibration, a little bit of grey, a little bit of orange. Now of course in the vibration world we would just say that's you know 1x and 10x. And if I was watching this machine every 30 days. I'm doing tests according to the PF interval. It's it's understanding the failure modes to say, well, how quickly does the condition degrade? And I've got to make sure that I get at least two measurements in the time where it's going from healthy to the time where it is, well, functionally failed, where we are being forced either because it's catastrophically failed or it's just unable to perform its function, um, you know, we want to take enough measurements to detect that. It's not so much to do with criticality. Criticality tells us whether we can justify doing it. The PF interval or the time to failure um, it tells us how often we should do tests. But anyway, if I take one measurement and then I come back later and I see 30 days later it's like this, 60 days later it's like this, I can say, okay, the unbalance is growing. And I can decide whether I want to do something about this high level of vibration. Do I think this is going to cause the machine to fail, you know, the structure to fail, is it creating noise that's creating a quality problem or a noise issue for workers and whatever. But the question I should also be asking myself is, is this going to do damage to the bearings? Because while we're monitoring the condition of this machine and we've got this unbalance, we damage the bearings. That's one of the root causes of bearing failure, misalignments and unbalance and these sorts of faults. So now we've seen the bearings start to fail. The patterns are a little bit different to this but you get the principle. So we'd like to know something about the machine so we know it's running speed, something about the bearings, something about the fan. So that's the basic idea of spectrum analysis.
it's condition monitoring because we're watching how the condition changes over time and hopefully we don't see anything because we're running the machine properly and we've got it nicely balanced, lubricated, aligned and all those things. So, therefore normally I would hope to see a real boring spectrum and might have little peaks around the place but you know there will always be a peak at the running speed at 1x. You see this has been normalized now, it's in orders instead of hertz or CPM cycles per minute. But if I do have unbalance, the 1x peak goes up. Um, if there's resonance, it amplifies the vibration and we tend to see the base of the peak sort of uh, broaden out. Misalignment, and this is puzzling misalignment because if it's angular we see it in the axial direction mostly at the running speed. If we've got parallel or offset misalignment we may see 1x go up and or 2x twice running speed and or 3x and 4x and 5x it all depends on the degree of misalignment the axis where you're measuring the type of coupling you're using all those things affect the pattern that you'll actually see looseness imagine the bearing sort of just uh, loose you know too much clearance uh, and there's rattling as a result then we see harmonics Harmonics occur when the vibration is not smooth. That nice simple sine wave creates one peak. When there is impacting going on or the vibration is not as smooth, it's a sort of distorted vibration, hard to summarize very quickly, we will see instead of just one peak, we'll see two, three, four, five, and they may all be a similar amplitude. In fact, they might go up in amplitude or they'll go down. And we sometimes see the noise floor, the bottom of the graph, lift up as well. Um, so, lots of different patterns, but one of the keys is not to get locked into trying to remember patterns. Don't be a wall chart analyst that looks at a spectrum and then looks up at the wall chart and says, hmm, that spectrum looks like this sort of fault. What you need to do, in my humble opinion, is become one with the machine. Think about your machines. Think about their failure modes think about the technologies that will detect those failure modes. Think about how you should take your vibration readings and uh, where you should take your measurements and so on. And if you understand why the vibration changes the way it does, then not only do you uh, make sure that you set up the analyzer to capture that vibration and you take measurements in locations that will capture it, when you see patterns like this or patterns like that or patterns like this for bearings you won't just think of the wall chart you'll think aha harmonics what does that tell me sidebands what would that tell me uh, lots of peaks high amplitude low amplitude all these patterns should tell you what must be happening inside the machine in order to create those patterns and that in my opinion, is how you become a good vibration analyst. Understand the machine, understand where the vibration comes from, understand the analyzer and sort of what you're seeing in the data, and then you can figure out what's going on and not just look at a wall chart and say, hmm, that spectrum looks a bit like that one. It must be looseness, you know. That's the trouble. A lot of people get reports and it, you know, it just says there's looseness. And they think, oh, what, what does that mean? You know, what do I do? Anyway, another story.